Do you avoid using traps altogether because your players figure it out before the trap is sprung? Don't worry, I've got some tips for you. This is Homebrew Help. Welcome to Homebrew Help. Today we're going over a very touchy subject, traps. Now, if you're like me, you don't use traps in every single dungeon that you make, mainly because your players find them and disarm them before they're even useful. You know, you put all this creative energy into making a trap really cool and really surprising, really nice, and boom, just like that, your players discover it, they disarm it, and you're done. Well, there are five really cool tricks that you can do to make your traps a little bit better and a lot more dangerous. And we're gonna go over them right now. Now, the first thing that we have to look at is always the passive perception of your players. Now, you think this is a, an obvious thing, right? You look at it and go, okay, passive perception, yeah, I know. But if you ask your players passive perception at the beginning of every single session, it clouds and muddies the waters. When you're asking for a perception check when someone enters a room, you're automatically tipping off your players that there is a trap there or there's something to be avoided. Don't do it. Keep your passive perception there and make sure you know exactly where each of your players is at. Now, a little side note on this, passive perception isn't active perception. It does not mean that they will automatically detect a trap if their passive perception is higher than, their, than the DC of the, the find of the trap. So think of it this way, right? If somebody is continually searching for something, they make the check of, I'm gonna check for traps. Cool, they make the, tra uh, they make the check. After that point, if they wanna to continue to look for tra traps, you can use their passive perception. If you do that just outright, you're automatically having them detect your traps before anything else goes. Now, we'll go over DC in a little bit because there is a really interesting trick with that too, uh, but that's number one. Now, number two with that is setting your damage by tier. Your traps are encounters. They're not just some little thing that goes off and nothing really happens, right? So how do you do that? What are the things that you, you wanna incorporate into the trap? What is the damage of the trap? Well, there's actually tables that have been written for this exact thing. Let's take a look. Okay, here we are right now, and this is mechanical traps. As you can see, you can look at moderate, dangerous, or deadly, right? So what you're looking at here is basically how severe the trap is, but you're also gonna make the trap based on the tier that somebody is in. So let's take the example of a first level mechanical trap, and we wanna make a moderate trap, right? The DC on that is the DC to disarm it, not the DC to detect it. Okay, so when you look at one through four, you're looking at it doing 1d10 damage. It's got a plus five attack bonus. If you want to make that same exact trap a deadly trap, you give it a plus 12 attack bonus and a DC of 20. So now you're looking at 4d10 in damage. Now that's deadly for that particular set of levels, for that particular tier. And you can look at this all the way up to 20th level and you notice that a deadly trap at 20th level in there does 132 damage or roughly that. Now these are for mechanical traps, but let's take a look at some magical traps. What if you have a trap that's set up for a particular spell to go off? Well, that's just as easy. Right, So you do the same exact thing, moderate, dangerous, deadly with that, with the tier levels, and here are some basics of what type of spell could go off from that trap. It goes all the way from a first level moderate with that at, can at a cantrip level, and goes all the way up to a 20th level deadly at a 9th level plus a 5th level spell going off. Now, this is something that I totally didn't know actually existed to this point. So there's a lot of it here that you know, is just this massive information. But if you really look at it, uh, you can see that the, the level of each of those spells goes up incrementally, uh, and as well as the, the severity of it. You don't always need to have a dangerous or deadly uh, trap that goes off, but realize moderate traps are just there to cause havoc. Dangerous traps are there to cause damage, and deadly traps are there to kill. Okay, now that we know about damage and severity, we're gonna go over the most important thing 
for every single trap. Don't make your traps obvious. I'll say it again, don't make your traps obvious. A DC 20 is an accurate amount for a moderate trap. Yeah, that's right. Think about it. If your goblins or your hobgoblins or your gnolls or someone are setting up a trap, they don't want it to be detected. They're going to take the time to make sure that it's hard to find. The other thing is that you got to make sure that you don't over describe your areas or you maintain a consistency of describing the areas that your players are in the entire time. If you do it that way, let, let's let's take the opposite reaction to that. If your normal de depiction of a room is, oh, you walk into the room, uh, there are stone columns on either side of you, and uh, there's very little light coming in, all that kind of stuff, it masks the idea that something might be hidden there. If you're very quiet about your descriptions when you're going through your dungeon, and then all of a sudden show up in one room and start saying something like, the floor seems wet. All of a sudden, your players are thinking that the floor is wet for a reason. They're going to be, you know, trying to figure out what's going on with that. You're going to get a lot of detect magic. You're going to get a lot of find traps, all those kind of things. And it kind of takes away from the suspense and the fear that you just put into them by the amount of damage that's actually in those traps. Remember something. Find traps, the spell, does not tell the person where the trap is. All it does is say, yeah, I think there's a trap here, and gives them an idea of what kind of danger might be on them. It's not something that's going to tell them, oh, there's a trap here, here, and here, and it's going to cause this much damage, and it's going to do this much thing, or how the trap is set up. It doesn't give them the full details of what they need to do to disarm it. And that's going to bring us to our next thing here, uh, because this happens a lot in campaigns where... You put out a trap, let's say you make a trap that's a, a pressure plate or something like that, and uh, your players find a unique way of getting around that. Avoid the dreaded body on a string trick. Now I have a player at my table that thinks this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. You take a dead uh, NPC that's there, wrap a rope around them, and throw them down the hallway to see what goes off. Well, you have to be a little smarter with your traps. Um, basically, what you end up doing is you make sure that your traps are set in a way that it's not a single trigger, right? So instead of it being a uh, pressure plate with it, make it a pressure plate where two people have to stand on it, or uh, there has to be a certain amount of weight. And there's also the thing of resetting traps. You know, just because the body activates the trap down the hallway does not mean that it can't just smush the body and then uh, start over again. Traps are not one-shot things. They should be an encounter. They should be something that the players have to try to figure out and avoid and disarm, not just something that hits them and then walks away, right? And that brings us to our last one here, and that is disarming traps and failure thresholds. All right, let me level with you. Not every trap is, hey, I use my thieves tools and I, fi I disarm the trap. Disarming a trap actually doesn't have any rules in D&D. The only thing is you've got thieves tools, you've got sleight of hand, you've got all these other things, but you want to make sure that your traps are set per different skill checks. You know, a magic trap is not going to be dis uh, taken apart by uh, some rogue who comes at it with a lockpick. Uh, you actually have to have something in there. So use your traps to actually figure out you know, what exactly your players are good at, what things they're not good at, and use those things as you're disarming for your traps, right? So let's say there's a big boulder coming down. Well, make this a strength trap. Make it so that the way to actually disarm this trap is to have your fighter or your barbarian stand up right in front of everything and block it and have him do a strength check to make sure that happens. You can't necessarily make every trap disarm, uh, in fact, it's fun to have them just go off every once in a while, but this is a key way to do it. The other part is failure thresholds, right? So even if your 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 rogue there with his lock picks and everything like that is uh, taking things apart and trying to work it, his skill check there could still fail. Put a penalty for them failing at minus five or anything like that, any lower than the DC that you set and watch the sparks fly. You'll notice, oh yeah, he yeah, the bear trap goes off and uh, you know it hurts his arm. Or uh, another poison arrow just shoots out of the wall and right into his neck. 
The thing is with it is that depending on how well he rolled, he's still going to have some effect and your traps don't go to waste. There's still going to be something there. Now, those are the five things that I think make better traps. I'm curious to see what you guys think make better traps. If you've got some things, go ahead and post them in the comments below. I would love to hear them. And remember, the best campaigns are always the ones that are homebrewed. So until next time, keep brewing.